cool. Hey everybody, it's Devin here again with Make Anything, and today we're doing some more sculpting in virtual reality. So maybe you remember a few weeks back I did a video sculpting on my HTC Vive when I made these little guys. And that was super fun and exciting. I think you guys liked it. I loved doing it. I'm especially excited for this one though, because I'm showing you guys a brand new application called Gravity Sketch. It's in pre-release right now, so many people haven't even seen it. And I think it's a pretty powerful tool for 3D modeling, especially since you can output those models into files that can be 3D printed. So, how about we get straight into it and see what Gravity Sketch can do. Alright, so here we are. You can see pretty much what I'm seeing in virtual reality. Here we have the menu for Gravity Sketch. It's, it's interesting, pretty much designed especially for VR. So it took me a little bit to get used to, but I made a few models so that I would not be in a total loss when I'm working on this for you guys. So as you can see, the first thing I'm doing here is using a, a surface tool that lets me draw on a flat plane. So I'm just making this circular platform so that I have a flat base to stick to the build plate while I'm printing it, so that's a good foundation. From there, I'm using this cube brush. Unlike Codon, where you're sculpting this virtual piece of clay, in Gravity Sketch, you're basically drawing out solid forms, like you're drawing on paper, but in 3D. So I'm using this cube brush and basically drawing out these long cube prisms. I'm not exactly sure what the name of this shape is. A cube noodle. I guess I can call it that because I always name things funky. And I really like the cube brush because it kind of combines the very geometric shape of the cube, but when you draw it becomes more organic because it's using the actual motion of my arms and like how I'm drawing it out in virtual reality. So I'm just trying to draw a hand here. I want to do something that I couldn't really do so easily in SolidWorks. So basically anything organic, especially like an anatomical model like this, would be very difficult to do in SolidWorks. And as you can see, it's very easy for me to just slowly go around, move the model around, and look at it from every angle, and just add on to it until I get that mass that I want. So I'm just going to slowly fill out the fingers. Now this finger right here, I kind of wanted to make it interesting, but I think that overhang might be a bit tricky for my printer. And it doesn't really make sense. Maybe I'll just have that finger go straight up as well. The other good thing about this software is it's not parametric like SolidWorks. You can't just go ahead and like stretch out uh, a line after you've already done it, but it is non-destructive. So I can undo basically as much as I want, or I can select a specific part by hovering over it with my right controller with that little red sphere. And then I can just take specific parts and move them around or delete them. And it doesn't matter if it was the first line I drew or the last one. And I really love that about this software. It makes it even easier to just work without having to worry about things too much. Because, hey, if there's something you did at the very beginning that you end up not liking, you can just go grab that and get rid of it, and it won't ruin the rest of your model. So I'm just going over these lines a couple times to make them a little more organic and interesting so it's not just a single cube. They're kind of overlapping to make this really complex shape. All right, it's starting to come together pretty quickly. <laughs> I'll admit I have very little experience creating anatomical models in any medium, let alone virtual reality. So this might not be perfect, but I think it's actually coming out pretty well. Alright, so my hand is done, and now I'm going to go down to the base and kind of add a whole bunch of cubes and make it look like this hand is shooting out of the ground or something, creating some kind of dynamic explosion. I'm really fascinated by creating a form that will create the feeling of motion, even though it's obviously a static piece. But by having these blocks kind of jutting out in every direction simulates a frozen moment in time versus just a static sculpture.
I think the other reason I'm really drawn to this cube brush is because it reminds me of like minerals and gemstones that can have perfect cube shapes, but they're still very organic and placed kind of randomly and chaotically. And that's kind of what I'm trying to go for here. So the awesome thing about this is I can just keep working on it until I'm happy. I can add things, take things away. And at some point you just gotta say, all right, that's it, I'm done. So I'm pretty happy with this model. And if I just save within Gravity Sketch, it'll create a folder on my desktop with the OBJ file that I can convert into an STL for 3D printing later. I'll show you that whole second part of the process, but first I'm gonna do one more sketch for you guys because it's pretty fun and I think it's cool to watch. In this one, I'm gonna start out by turning on mirror. And as you can see, it turned on this gray transparent wall and that's my mirror. Everything I draw will be symmetrically mirrored on the other side. And that's pretty cool for creating like models of living things or creatures and such because you know, most animals are somewhat symmetrical. I like to create a base using the mirror mode, and then before I actually finish the model, I'll turn it off and kind of add details on either side to make it a little imperfect, because you know, nothing is perfectly symmetrical. But to start out, this is a great way to get a nice even form. So I'm making sure to fill up everything here, that way I won't have these difficult to print hollow spaces inside of my form but then I'm just gonna slowly keep building up and I'm kind of just creating a head here. So I'm creating a kind of stylized skull or it's maybe gonna be like some kind of tribal item. I can imagine some uh, ancestors creating these scary omens to summon spirits or something. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, I'm just gonna keep working on that, building up. As you can see, it's very easy to adjust and just move entire parts. That's like one of my favorite things about this. And I'm just gonna keep on drawing. Make sure that I got the eyebrows there, we've got the nose, we've got some teeth. And then I'm gonna kind of fill the inside of this eyeball and start fleshing out the back of the head. Building up slowly, making sure I don't leave too many gaps. In virtual reality, of course, I can do pretty much whatever I want, but I have to consider that I'm going to be 3D printing this, so I do have to be aware of any overhangs I'm creating and make sure that this is something I'll actually be able to print out successfully. So I turn off the mirroring so that I could kind of get a little more asymmetrical and natural with this hair, or whatever you want to call it. I'm giving it a little decoration on the back. At this point, I thought I was going a little overboard with the hair, so I actually decided to just scrap it and kind of do it again in a different way. So I was able to easily just get rid of that hair and now I can experiment some more and see what I like. So I'm thinking these more chunky blocks are gonna work out better. So it's not quite so crazy on top. I don't wanna distract from the skull itself too much. Some parts like this eyebrow were giving me trouble, so I decided to switch to the round brush. And as you can see, that creates a bit of a smoother line. So hey, why not just go around and kind of start smoothing things out? I already did my super geometric model for that hand, so nothing wrong with doing some rounded parts on this one. Yeah, so I ended up kind of changing the direction and going a bit more organic again, using these round brushes and making these kind of swirly patterns. I think it looks pretty cool and it also creates a more of a contrast between that geometric hair part that I have and the skull itself makes it a little more dynamic and interesting. All right, so I'll make sure to save this skull. And like I said, saving this sketch will create an OBJ file. And in order to do some final modifications, I'm gonna bring that file into Mesh Mixer. So when I bring it into Mesh Mixer, you can see that all these different strokes are different colors. And that's because Gravity Sketch doesn't create a single model. It actually keeps each stroke separate. That's why I have to bring it here into Mesh Mixer and use this Make Solid command. And that is a super powerful tool that'll just take all those lines, combine them, and get rid of the whole mess of intersections, and instead create a single form. So I'll just play around with the settings a bit and since I have some geometric forms here, 
I want to set the solid type to that sharp edge preserve because that'll get me nice clean lines unlike these really ragged edges that you're seeing here. Of course you can use whatever settings you want. It's fun to play around with and see what kind of different results you can get. So there we go. I've got a nice solid form and the next thing I just need to do is use the plain cut feature which will cut the bottom off and give me a nice flat surface to print up from. So I can preview it, look underneath, make sure there's no holes, and when I accept that, boom, the model is pretty much done. I think that's all I have to do and it's ready to 3D print. I save that STL and then the final step is to bring that file into my slicer, which is Simplify 3D. When you're working in Gravity Sketch, you really have no idea what the scale of the object is. So I really don't worry about the size until I have it here in the slicer. And I can easily scale it up and down within Simplify 3D, where I at least have this virtual build plate to reference the size of my model. So I'll just go ahead and scale it however I like. I think this is a good size. And then I'll center it in my build plate, and I'll make sure I have the right print settings I want to make this work. I'm not really doing anything crazy with the settings here, I'm just making the layer height 0.1 millimeter, so a little more high resolution than I usually go, and I'll also take down the infill to 20%. The preview function is pretty great, because I can look up here at this super steep part and see if I think it'll print out. It's definitely an aggressive angle here that we're trying out, but I think my printer can handle it, so I'm going to go ahead and send it out. All right, so here is my skull printing out. And if you can tell, it looks kind of metallic or sparkly. And that's because I'm using this very special material from a company called Protopasta. And it's a composite iron PLA. So it is still PLA plastic, but it has some little bits of iron added into it. I'm using that iron composite PLA for this model in particular because I'm trying to create that look of an ancient relic. And iron has the ability to rust and create a patina, which is kind of a way of showing the age of an item. And what's really cool about this is you can create a special rust solution, apply it to this part, and it should oxidize at an accelerated rate. So before I add my solution, I'm just going to go over this quickly with a metal brush to kind of buff out any ridges and such. And now I'm going to create my own rusting solution using white vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and salt. So I'm going to pour some of the vinegar into my glass here, and about an equal amount of hydrogen peroxide as well. And then finally, I'll add salt until the solution is pretty saturated. Then I just mix it up with this brush and brush it straight onto my part. And I'll also leave it for a few hours covered in this paper towel that is soaked in my solution because I want to get a nice good rust. So while that sits and rusts, I want to show you guys some other models I created in Gravity Sketch. So this one here is my first model that I actually created in Gravity Sketch, and it was very much inspired by that gemstone look and also the desire to capture action in a static piece. This was a pretty nerve-wracking print because I had no idea if it would work. It's got some pretty steep angles, and I had to leave it overnight because it's such a large print. So I am just stoked that it survived the night and came out so well. Here's another very similar sculptural piece. I mean, I just like the style, so I guess I'm creating a series now. Alright, back to my rusted part. Here it is after a couple hours, and as you can see, it has turned a bit more brownish-orange. It's not super rusted, but it definitely made a difference. Alright guys, so for my second attempt at sculpting in virtual reality and bringing that into 3D printing, I think my results today were pretty awesome. Gravity Sketch is obviously a very powerful way of creating in virtual reality and bringing that into 3D printing. I was able to make these complex sculptures relatively quickly and intuitively using virtual reality. I mean, I could make this stuff in SolidWorks, but it would be a pain in the butt. Using virtual reality, it was really nice. I was just kind of going with the flow. It let me just get my ideas out there without having to plan it out as much as I would have to with some other 3D software. 
So I'm really getting more and more confident that virtual reality is a useful tool for creating art. I'm also really excited about this tribal skull thing I created using that iron composite PLA. My rust solution obviously wasn't as powerful as some things I've seen online, but it still gave it a nice aged look and maybe I'll just leave it outside and let it age on its own and see, see what happens with it. Could be really cool. Oh, and I should also mention that the iron PLA is somewhat magnetic, so I'll have to play around with that some more at a future time and see what I can do with that material. Alright, that was another episode of Make Anything for You Guys. I hope you enjoy it. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment. It's always nice to hear from you. Until next time, don't forget to stay inspired.